you have the option in Sibelius of fine tuning the way your score looks. We've already looked in a separate video at the house styles dialog and how you can import different house styles. Now remember a house style is an over overarching set of rules that determines how your score looks. But you might want to tweak individual elements of that. Well Sibelius lets you do that as well. Again, it's to do with the appearance of your score, so you would go to the Appearance tab. And it's over here, it's the Engraving Rules dialog box you're going to go to. There is a shortcut for it, which is Control plus Shift plus E. I'm just going to click on it there. And it opens up. Down the left hand side here are a large number of tabs, we call them. And each tab gives you a large number of options inside that category. So for example, if we look at the bar lines tab, here is where you can determine the width of specific bar lines. Whether it's a normal bar line, a double bar line, you can, sep you can determine the separation between them. Or you can fine tune all of these. You can determine what is the default bar line for that particular type of house style, whether you're going to use rings on repeats. Anything to do with how the things look, you can tweak them from here. I should point out at this point that Sibelius as a company spent an enormous amount of time researching what is the best set or what are the best settings for each of these categories. So yes, you can tweak them, but think very carefully before you do. Just for a second, I'm going to cancel this just to show you something else. If I was to go to, for example, the text tab and go to the rehearsal marks group and click on the dialogue launcher, all it does is open up the Rehearsal Marks tab of the Engraving Rules dialog box. So a lot of these you really don't want to mess with, but there are one or two that you may sometimes want to just adjust. Let me show you where. Again, I'm going to cancel this for a second. I'm looking here at an orchestral part, a trumpet part, for a piece of music. But looking at the first page here, it's just a wee bit cramped and a wee bit untidy for me. So what I want to do is just grab this and make a wee bit of a bigger gap there. Ah, now there's a problem because, as you probably know, I'm a control freak. I didn't want Sibelius to do that. What it's done is it's moved all those staves and made them fill the page. It's called justifying the staves. So I wanted control over that. If I just tweak that back up just a wee bit, you can see it's jumping down. And I want to have a wee bit more control in that. Now, actually, in the real world, that looks absolutely fine. I would probably keep that, which is another reason, another example of why you have to think very carefully before you make any of these changes. But I'll show you how you can do it anyway. What I would do is I would open up the engraving rules. And this is to do with staves. So I would go to the staves tab. And there's an option there to justify the staves when the page is 65% full. If I just show you that page there, it's not quite 65%, but whenever I moved that down slightly, it's not going to let me do it until I close the box, then it became 65% and the, the bottom stave jumped to the bottom of the page. If I wanted more control, I can change that 65% to 100%. Click OK. And now when I do the same thing, I can really fine tune. I may want a bigger gap there because I want to put a graphic in there or some text or whatever. That's up to me. Now, it doesn't jump down at all, and I can fine-tune, whoops, until I get to the very bottom of the page, obviously. I can fine-tune exactly how much space I've put between the staves. So that's one example of where you might want to use the engraving rules. Another one is in the realm of bar numbers. You can see here, um, with this is set up at the moment to give a bar number at the start of each line. Well, again, if I go to my engraving rules, go to my bar numbers, I can determine the frequency of these bar numbers. So it's just, at the moment, it's at every system. I can tell it every bar number. Sorry, at every however many bars, 1, 4, 5, 8, or 10. I can tell it not to have any bar numbers at all. That's handy for things like worksheets. I might decide I want to uh, show it on the first bar of a section of music. I can determine if I want to change to count the repeats. All these options are available to me, as well as changing the text that they use and how they actually look, whether they're aligned, whether they've got whatever in about them.
Okay, so the bar numbers tab is one that you may want to investigate. Most of the rest of these, to be honest, just as well to leave alone. Because all these settings, as I said, have been researched and investigated thoroughly by Sibelius. And you really don't want to start messing around with them unless, you, unless you're absolutely sure about what you want to do. So let's just go back to, I'm going to click on the bar numbers. Oops, that one there. I'm going to say I don't want any bar numbers. Click OK. All my bar numbers disappear. So that's how you can tweak your, the layout of your score and the look of your score by using the engraving rules in the Appearance tab.